Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of This Week in EDM, where we go for songs that came out this week in EDM. How self-explanatory is that? Today we've got 33 songs I wanted to talk about. As always, there's a Spotify link down below uh, for all the songs and easy access listening. But first, let's hop into the bad category, songs that I thought were bad. Uh, just remember, this is just my opinion. Don't take them as gospel truth. Uh, we've got David Guetta and Afrojack with Raving, another main stage rave-centric track that has no value anywhere outside of said context. That's it. And then we've got Riot 10 and Infect featuring Stephen Cannon with All Black from the new Feral EP out now on Monster Cat by Riot 10. Yeah, this is just another Britom track from Riot 10 that I really just don't care for. I can hear the Infect production, but it just felt fairly neutered, all things considered. The vocals aren't great, and ultimately I just don't really vibe with Riot 10's music right now, so that's how I feel about that. Then we got Gabri Ponte, Steve Aoki, and K.E.L. with He's a Pirate, Save Me. Um, a Euro-style Pirates of the Caribbean cover is exactly what I expected from these two right now. Uh, it is a unnecessary remix that doesn't do anything new. It's rave bait, and it's not great. Then we're moving into the meh category songs that I thought were pretty meh. And we've got Dea with Vengeance Fixation from the new Dodless, I want to say, Dodless Project Era Reversal album, a surprise LP project, whatever this is, dropped from Dea. And um, yeah, this is more abrasive and destructive than any other track I think I've heard from Dea up to this point, uh, opting for a more chaotic feeling than melodic production more so than anything. Uh, that being said, I wasn't really vibing with this. The unnecessarily long outro and ear-shattering up-tempo just... We're not my forte here. Then we got Mern with Peter's theme, fairly by the books progressive house with simple progression and some uh, fun production elements like wind chimes and seemingly wooden rim shots. It's fairly natural and clean, but um, I just thought it was meh, all things considered. Then we got Alan Walker with Wake Up, the debut Monster Cat track and the first of an upcoming four track EP from Alan Walker. Uh, the track. I think, honestly, is fine. I think it's better than a majority of Alan Walker tracks, but nothing special in the grand scheme of Electro House and Alan Walker as a whole. Um, I just didn't think there was enough to differentiate this from a lot of his discography to be something super unique, and also wasn't that bad, though, so I kind of just met on it. We got Dylan Francis and Long Story Short with Take Me Away. Tech house from these two that is serviceable and will slot into a larger project or set, I think, nicely, but nothing to stand out by itself. Um, so much so, or to that point, that it kind of falls into many tropes of techno right now with this kind of dark, moody atmosphere. I think it's a fine track. Then we got Griffin featuring John Newman with The Reason from the new Pulse LP album out now from Griffin. Honestly, I think this is a pretty boring release single with a simple kind of bouncy drum and bass tune here or production. Then honestly, this thing kind of sounds like it's a remix already. I feel like I can hear the underlining original house song or production here, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. I thought this track was underwhelming, so... Then we've got Nero with Solar, uh, probably my least favorite of all the singles from this upcoming new album. It's a tad generic and lacks a lot of the energy that typically comes with a Nero kind of track uh, in favor of a more kind of straightforward melodic lead line, which I don't actually think works really well in Nero's favor up to this point. So and or stylistically. So, yeah, not bad, but uh, not my favorite for sure. Then we've got Spaghetti with like WTF VIP. Uh, Spaghetti doing bass house in only the way that Spaghetti knows how. Uh, bouncy beats and screeching synths is a, this kind of form of bass house that I don't really hear a ton or is quite uncommon. It feels like a kind of dubstep bass house hybrid. And uh, I don't think it was that bad. I, I'm not a, a ton on Spaghetti's sound design for the most part, so maybe that's why I think it's mad. But I think if you like Spaghetti, I think you will really, really enjoy this one. That's not to say I don't like him, but I just think this one is meh. Then we got Chami, Mala, and uh, Mac J with N9, some main stage G house that's kind of built to be this kind of festival opener or closing track. Um, I actually really enjoyed the sound design and tone of this individual single, but I didn't really feel like it had much else other than that main lead melody. Um, I thought it kind of lived and died by that, and I thought it was not bad, but I uh, had nothing else going on for it, so... They're moving into the good category songs that I thought were pretty good. We've got Rufus to Soul with Lately. Uh, this is just classic Rufus to Soul, for better or for worse. Uh, it's exactly the sound I came to them for, or I come to them for, but uh, kind of one hand here, it's perfectly what I wanted, but on the other hand, it's kind of um, definitively something I've heard before. So I think it's just kind of at the bottom of good. We got Armin Van Buren with Es Vadra uh, from, yeah, I would say just new single. It's not from anything here that I know of. But uh, yeah, this is a main stage kind of melodic house here uh, from Armin. That is definitely a step up from his last couple of tracks for sure. It's nothing too special, but definitely has that kind of summer vibe that's well clean and really well mixed uh, kind of track. So really enjoyed it. 
Now we've got Velvet Pony with Where Do We Begin? A good follow-up to a great record that Velvet, as we kind of see Velvet Pony return to more uh, lighthearted and happy-go-lucky style of production, not so much the uh, Skrillex sampling of dubstep here. But uh, yeah, nothing over the top, just simple, plain, and, and pretty good. I wouldn't say it's actually a plain track, but it's just simple good for Velvet Pony, I would say, from what I've heard, so... Then we got Andrew Bayer and Oliver Smith with Like Dat, uh, progressive trance with a simple earworm of a melody and chorus. I really love um, what these two have been doing as of late on their collaborations with, I think, Rude Boys is the name of the last track. Um, it's kind of outside of the regular wheelhouse, more or less, and uh, I think it's working really well, these two collaborating, so... I'll hear more of that. Then we got T Plus, uh, Pazalite with First Rendezvous, a conglomerate of genres like kind of Speed House, Electro House, a little bit of 8 bit here all throughout. Um, it's fast paced, high energy with a constantly driving and full beat here. Um, really enjoyable and super easy to listen to for how intense I think the track is. So. I go listen to that. Then we got OK featuring Piper Byers with Hold My Love. Funky dance pop with commanding bass instrumentation here. Uh, the vocals really make the track, and I think it's a well-executed kind of careless summer banger that you just kind of put on in the background and just vibe to, and I think it worked great. We got Lucid with Orbitando, a creative new trap track from Lu Lucid uh, with a focus on the kind of deep bass sound. Uh, the song is very unique and feels like a kind of start to the return of a fairly absent Lucid of these last couple years. If we get more singles coming out in uh, quick succession like this track, I think uh, Lucid could be another mainstay uh, in my roster of artists that I follow all the time. So, But I really like this one. Then we got Hades and Wasio with Original Sin from the new debut album How to Kill a God by Hades. Uh, this is dark, a dubstep uh, with kind of those hip hop vocals that um, almost feels like it's Apache without the cinema, like the orchestral uh, instrumentation, I should say, the orchestral section. Um, it feels really unique, though, that being said, enough to have a real identity in a sea of like brooding uh, dubstep sound design. So this is a track that I really enjoyed, and I think the album is not too bad either. We got Muramasa featuring Cherish with Fly, the first, I would say, explicitly electro house track from Muramasa that I can have, at least in recent memory here. Um, and even then, it is kind of this more gentle, well-structured progression, or has that well-structured progression to it. Uh, Cherish's vocals are simple, but very necessary for the track to have succeeded, I think, as well, and I'm really enjoying this one. Then we got Trivecta and Lux Times with Ocean, a bright and energetic melodic dubstep with a long progressive lead in. Uh, the vocals are strong and I really love the length of this track, almost I believe five minutes at this point. Um, this is Trivecta doing good Trivecta things. I've been a little wishy-washy with him as of late, but this is solid. Uh, honestly, also moving forward, these songs are great at this point. All of these remaining uh, 12 songs I have to go through, I'm I'm loving. Like, go check all these out for sure. And we got Tourist with Protector, a beautiful atmospheric progressive house with bright and airy synths and angelic vocal elements here too. Uh, another track that's relatively simple but does everything right. And I really enjoyed it. Then we got Frankie Nuts and Guy Arthur with I Can't Stop. It's not an I Can't Stop cover, but it's called I Can't Stop. Uh, crushing dubstep production with a dirty bass line. Massively dirty bass line. Um, only to switch up that kind of final movement for a more glassy hybrid trap sound. Um, again, lots of like real girth to this one. It's just, ugh, it's nasty. As we've got uh, the Skylar and Bitterfly remix of Say It, originally by Ace Aura and Space Yeti. A uh, hybrid trap take on the original, and I will say I was very pleased how well uh, the trap kind of transferred over genres. Like the original color based tune that turned into this, this trap one that it really translated well, so much so that I actually think I like it better than the original. Uh, Skylar and Bitterfly add a lot to this remix with three unique movements and a hard style finale uh, included there. Um, the original is great, but this style is one that I jam with more so uh and i especially love that rock and distorted guitar midsection i'm really liking this track we got caribou with volume uh, sampling the pump up the volume uh caribou's rendition of that track is a very like raw garage house style track with smooth production and fantastic mixing this is another one that's a great example of how sometimes being more simple works out really really well in your favor then we've got Wales and Birdie Scott with Till Tomorrow from the new Computer Music EP out now by Wales. And I'm really jammed to this new track. Uh, it's a little different than the majority of other Wales stuff, but man, uh, this thing I think hits in all the right places for me. Um, the kind of full stutter synths and massive lead melody just hits right. You just those big quarter notes. They're like almost these like sustain style, just walls of sound, just boom, boom. Like it just, it goes. Um, so great track. 
And then we got Roy Knox and Derp Cat with Ghost in the Shadows. Uh, these two really cha uh, channeling their inner AU5 on this track. It's an explosive melodic dubstep track with girthy growls and punchy percussion. It's even got that kind of side trance final movement that, that AU5 is no stranger to. But regardless, it's a fantastic track with a ton of creativity. Um, if you like Roy Knox or Derp Cat or AU5 even, I know he's not on this track, uh, go listen to this track. I think it is another great one. Another good melodic dubstep one that uh, feels like it's got that niche vibe to it that's not uh, commercially boring. Yeah, Jamie XX and the Avalanches with All You Children, a bright progressive house with metal drums and an ever chanting choir of vocals. The vocals turn into this kind of squeaky synth too, which is also very, very brilliant. Uh, it's the most straightforward single from the upcoming record, and oh boy, that record is going to be massive up to this point. I think four singles up to this point, four or five singles are crazy. Uh, love and new Jamie XX. Then we got Night Punk and So So with Function. Night Punk just does not miss. This is yet another hardcore breakbeat track with hip hop vocals and a, a sense of power that could topple any nation. Um, it's intense, it's high octane, and it's great. Go listen to Night Punk. Then we got Isonock with Thrash or Party Starter from the new and surprise album Forever from ISOXO and Knock 2, who officially collaborated for Isonock, a new alias. Um, this is a nasty album, album opener as it goes hard and really gets the party started, as it says. Um, the first half is this explosive kind of hybrid trap sound that sounds like this synthesized guitar is the lead line here, uh, going nuts. Also for that back end of the track, which is kind of screeching hard style that I typically don't love, but I think worked really well in context here. Uh, and the closing 10 seconds are just like this other random switch up of trap sound. I think the track is just overall stellar. So we're moving into the standout category. We've got three songs in standout that I think are cut above the rest this week, above and beyond your regular style tracks that are just better. Uh, we've got Camufly featuring Avara with Space For Me, another garage house banger from Camufly, but this time to the darker and moodier sound design. Uh, one we typically hear in the kind of dubstep techno space, but not so much in the garage and house. Um, still has the kind of classic Camufly style with a blanket of intensity. Uh, this might be actually one of my favorite Camufly tracks yet. Uh, the vocals uh, as well on here and their associated chops are killer as always from Camufly. Love this track. And penultimately, we've got Ellis with Promises from the new Signals EP out now on Monster Cat. Uh, in true electro-funk fashion, Ellis knocks it out of the park again. Another one that he just absolutely destroys. Uh, the vocoder vocals are insane and remind me a lot of Daft Punk, as it does for a lot of people with vocoder um, vocals. And uh, that now iconic Ellis synth uh, is also clean and works really well with, I think, the vocals more so than anything. So, fantastic track. The three-track EP is also banging. So... And my number one track of the week is Charlie XCX and Billie Eilish with Guess featuring Billie Eilish. Another track for a brat summer and adding Billie to this track was brilliant, if not just for the simple line of uh, Charlie likes boys, but she, know what I'd, she knows I'd hit that, which is hilarious. Um, the production is still this kind of loud electro fidget house. It doesn't really feel like it fits into the modern pop landscape, which is part of the reason why I love it. I think you're going to hear this maybe even on the radio uh, and it feels like it doesn't fit. And boy, maybe EDM is truly back in the pop landscape. Um, we'll be, I'm very curious to hear how this goes a year later after Brad is released and it's made its waves in uh, pop culture. But yes, amazing track as always. But uh, that has been this week in EDM. Let me know what you think of any and all songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media and I'll see you guys in another video.